Finding a Memory, written by Shatona Havig, narrated by Krista Del Sorbo. Chapter 3 It's got good bones, this house. Frank Grace spread out half a dozen sheets of graph paper and taped them together as he spoke. Just cut off ten squares here. From the other side of the table, Benjamin watched without saying a word. And six over here. If Frank thought that'd get the boy talking, he'd need to do some rethinking. There. One square to the inch. Time to start measuring. Markers and construction paper came next. While Benjamin measured distances from corners to windows and doorways, Frank put it all down on the papers. Well, he put most of it down. Where he saw walls that weren't load bearers, he left those out. Left out the closets and pantry. Left out the cabinets. Now, where are the water sources? We need those. Outlets can be moved, but it's expensive to move plumbing. Shouldn't do that. Once it was all done, Benjamin came to survey the papers. Missing a wall there. Don't need it. We can keep or remove as we please. It's time to figure out cabinets. Frank pulled out his phone. I've been doing my research, and look what folks do with those pallets. I've got calls into places around Savannah. They're letting me bring out my trailer to fill it up. You just need to figure out what you want them to look like and what you need. Benjamin rubbed the back of his neck and stared first at the paper and then at the phone Frank still held. I don't know. I need a change, that's for sure. But I don't really care what it looks like. I just need it to be functional, I suppose. Time ticked past as Frank considered those words. The problem was how to be delicate about things. Of course Benjamin didn't care, but someday Benjamin would be half of a different whole, and if the way the boy, or man he supposed, Reacted to the mention of Mallory Barrows, Frank had a pretty good idea of who that other half would be, and she might care. Telling him that, however, might not get the results he needed, something his wife had always said solved the problem for him. Well, my Gina was always a stickler for making sure any changes to the house would raise the value. She always made us stick to trends that had longevity. So that's why I think you want to open up these rooms. Let the light shine through instead of getting trapped and shadowed. Sounds good to me. Not helpful, my boy. He tried again. So we could do some sort of cooktop on an island. It would work to define spaces without needing walls. Okay. They'd need a new approach if he hoped to get started on the cabinets anytime soon. At this rate, I'll be dead before we make the first cut. Benjamin's phone pinged and Benjamin told it to read the message. At Uncle Bud's grave, can you come? I need you. Go, son. I'll be here when you get back unless it's really late. That's more important. Benjamin had made it to the door before Frank had an inspired idea. Hey... Ask Mallory what she thinks about this kitchen redo. Women are better at this stuff than we are, and it might give her something to take her mind off things. Great idea. I'll let you know once I talk to her. It's been almost two years now. Don't I know it. Lost my best friend after Bud's expiration date. From the far end of the cemetery, Benjamin could see two things. First, Whoever's turn it was to mow had either forgotten or was too busy. He'd have to come down the next afternoon and do what of it he could. Second, Mallory's text had not exaggerated. She sat with her knees drawn up to her chest, arms wrapped around them in a long skirt covering all that should be covered, thankfully. Her cheek rested on her knees, and it seemed to him that her eyes were closed, but from this distance he couldn't be sure. Lord... What do I say? How can I help? The prayer only made him feel further rather than closer to the Lord. Abba. As if she felt him watching her, Mallory's head rose and she looked his way. Smiled? He thought so. 
With a wave, he strode through the grass and around to where she sat watching him. The uncertainty in her expression decided his next move. Benjamin sat down beside her, put both arms around her and just held her. I miss him. Ah, uh, no. So do you. She always attempted to acknowledge his loss as if it were remotely comparable. Benjamin just closed his eyes and held fast. Words weren't necessary. Were they? A breeze flapped her skirt against his jeans. Instead of reaching down to tuck it out of the way, she wrapped her arms around one of his and squeezed. I read some more of the diary today. Hot tears burned his arm as she rested her cheek against it. It reminded me of Uncle Bud and his Emily Sue. This girl was engaged to a boy. The story unfolded, a familiar one. It sounds like one of Mama's favorite songs. Go on with the wedding. It happened almost just that way. I wonder what happened to Francis. Did he find someone to be happy with? Mallory rooted around in her bag and pulled out the diary. I don't know. As she opened it, she sagged a bit. It might not say. Then she snapped it shut. I'll read later. I already feel better with you here. This might just make me cry. She leaned back to look at him. Is it terrible that I have a team in this game? He had no idea what she was talking about, but Benjamin stood and offered her a hand to help her up. Team? You know, like for books or movies where there's a love triangle. Some folks would be Team John and others would be Team Francis. I'm totally Team Francis. Uh, I guess I would be, too. Tears poured down her cheeks and she stepped into his arms without him even offering. Uncle Bud liked him, too. And here I'd started to think you were settling. As it turned out, she was. Only a few long seconds of tears followed before she pushed away from him and flicked them from her eyelashes. Ignore me. Why don't I make us some sandwiches or something? Benjamin steered her down the hill and toward his truck. Mr. Grace is at my house planning new cabinets, but I don't know what I need. He suggested you might have a better idea of what's helpful. When she hesitated, he added, but if, if you're not up to it, I could call Mama. That seemed to snap her out of it. Mallory hooked an arm through his and sighed. That sounds exactly like what I need, and Uncle Bud would love to see you making the cottage your own. The graph paper, Kitchen, stared back at Mallory as she listened to Frank Grace describe what he'd planned. A phone appeared with photos of the kinds of cabinets Frank thought they'd be able to build. That threw her into kitchen envy. You can make these out of old pallets? A flip or two of the screen, man, Frank had mad phone skills, and a video began. She watched a guy load a table up with old pallet and scrap wood. He ripped nails out and left them in a pile while he went to work on each board, planing all sides until it looked new. Piece by piece, Frank zipped ahead to show how the man joined the boards into beautiful doors for a tabletop. I thought about doing that, but he flipped back to the other kitchens. Something like this. I kind of like this shaker style. It's a bit simple, but it also allows for the beauty of the wood to show through. Mallory took the phone and flipped back a couple of photos. How hard would it be to get that kind of whitish look? Not hard. They call it pickling or whitewash, depending on who's doing it. You just thin down your white paint and stain the wood with it. Rub it back off. Do some antiquing in the corners and such, and then we can seal it up nice and they'll be beautiful. Benjamin appeared with fried fish sandwiches and plain potato chips. Eat up and tell me what we're doing. It's your kitchen, she argued, between bites of a delicious sandwich that might just rival Beth's. Mallory showed him what she thought he should do. It'll be easy to clean the shaker ones he mentioned. I like easy to clean, and they'll still have visual interest. Sounds good to me, but how many and where? 
that graph paper took to life as she began making small suggestions. And I wouldn't do those farmhouse sinks with the aprons. You're tall enough without having to bend all the way over to get to the bottom of one of those things. Do you like them? I like the look, but I don't know how much I'd like actually having one. But like I said... Mallory broke off as she realized what he might be getting at. Um... Frank to the rescue. You have to consider resale, but only so far. I suggest you ask folks you know who have them. Get a consensus. A new thought stopped that. No, no. Benjamin is a fisherman. He is always bringing home fish to fillet, shrimp to clean, nasty things. I think he needs to make sure that whatever sink he ends up with is comfortable for him. Short and tall people get the worst of it. Average folks can probably use anything comfortably. Just get enamel instead of stainless. I think it holds heat better for cleaning. As they spoke, Frank measured and cut out a small sink cabinet and set it in place, a nice little rectangle out of blue construction paper. Okay, now what? On each side of that window, you have walls. Do you do shelves, cabinets, nothing? What goes up there? Benjamin said, Something. I wouldn't know what to do if I went to get a drink and couldn't reach up and grab a glass off to the left there. That's just because you're a lefty. I'd have said right. Frank broke into a moment that had promised something. She just didn't know what that something was. Shelves or doors? I like the openness of shelves, but I bet stuff gets awfully dusty. She sighed. But for glasses you use every day, maybe just around the window, we, um, you, could put glasses and mugs there, any cookbooks on the other side, a plant and maybe canisters of often used things like sugar or coffee over there. But the rest of the kitchen should have doors, maybe glass doors wherever you put your plates, if you like to see them, that is. Green strips half the width of the sink cabinets went up on either side of that window. It left just enough room for a dishwasher and a narrow cabinet to the left of the sink. Do you want a dishwasher? Seems silly just for me, Benjamin said. Won't always be just you here, son. Frank didn't give Mallory an eyebrow waggle, but he might as well have. And houses sell better with them. Just use it a couple times a month and you'll be golden. Apparently, Mallory said as Frank cut a dishwasher out of yellow paper, you're getting a dishwasher. They managed to plan out the entire wall where the sink sat and the adjacent wall with the fridge. There, everything stalled. I need to think, she said after a few minutes. A few snaps of the room and the graph papers settled it for her. I'll play around and let you know tomorrow or the next day. Frank polished off his sandwich and carried the plate to the sink. Well, I'll let y'all figure it out. Just call me when you're ready for me to add the next bits. While Benjamin walked the man to the door, Mallory tried to imagine no breakfast bar, no upper cabinets there, maybe an island instead. Island. Definitely an island. She'd just mentally mapped out a pantry that would have Beth from Comfort Cuisine salivating when she felt Benjamin's arms steal around her waist and his breath on her ear as he asked, How are you doing? Should she tell him? All the things she had to say could either bring them closer or drive them apart again. Um. Talk to me, bookworm. I care, remember? Indecision picked a fight with hope and almost won. Mallory hugged his arms and turned to kiss his cheek. I'm doing better with you here. She swallowed emotion that threatened to choke her and croaked out. I'm always better with you. That makes two of us, lovey. Tune in tomorrow for the next chapter. Thanks for listening.